In this lesson, we'll take a look at drawing a great white shark using a variety of black and white drawing media. Hello everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and in this lesson we'll take a look at creating a drawing of a great white shark using a variety of black and white drawing media. Now great white sharks have always terrified me, but they've also fascinated me at the same time. So I wanted to create a drawing that captured that terrifying aspect of this animal, but also the fascination that goes along with it because I do have a lot of respect for this creature. Now for this lesson, it was somewhat of an experimentation. I worked on a new surface. I worked on crescent gray mount mounting board. So it's not really designed for drawing media, but I liked the texture of the surface and I also liked the tonality of the surface as well. And during this demonstration, you'll see I use a variety of different drawing media. We'll use white ink, black India ink. We'll also use alcohol-based markers as well as graphite, white and black charcoal, and a little bit of technical drawing pen is thrown in there as well. So without further ado, let's take a look at the process and I hope you enjoy the following lesson. We'll start with a light and loose graphite sketch on the gray crescent mounting board using an HB graphite pencil. In these early stages, I'm just focused on finding the shape or the outer contour of the great white shark. You can see I've drawn a line to designate the upper portion of the mouth, and now I'm trying to find or locate the dorsal fin, which because of the angle of the great white shark is located fairly far back on the body of the shark. We'll also add an indication of the locations of the gills. And we'll also draw one of the side fins extending outward. We'll draw a triangular shape for the second fin on the other side of the body. And from this angle, we can only see one eye. So we'll draw a shape for it and we'll finish off the bottom portion of the mouth. We'll also add a few indications of those menacing rows of teeth. And we'll also draw a line where the darker portion of the upper part of the body meets the lighter portion of the lower portion of the body. Then we'll mix up a diluted mixture of India ink with some water to create a lighter gray, and we'll start painting this in. At this point, we're looking at the areas of darkest tone or value. Progressively, we can add a little bit more of the ink to the mixture, having just a little bit less water in the mixture. Now you'll see as the ink goes onto the surface, the brush strokes are very, very visible, but this application is going to serve primarily as somewhat of an underpainting. We'll develop additional applications of value using different drawing materials over the top. So this portion of the process can be relatively loose. We'll address, as I mentioned before, the darkest area. So this includes the eye, the bottom portion of the body, the fin on the right side of the body, and also the dorsal fin. We can go back over the top of the applications with a heavier application if we need to make some of the values slightly darker. Now we'll switch over to alcohol-based markers and we'll start here with a 20% warm gray. We're going to go over some of the applications that we made with the ink earlier, but for the most part we're going to cover the majority of the body here. We'll start with the upper portion where the grays are a little bit darker. Here again, we can see some of the brush strokes as the marker applications dry. You'll notice that when they're first applied, the value is a little bit darker, but as it dries, the value becomes uh, quite a bit lighter. Now we can start differentiating some of our values and start pushing the values a little bit darker. So we'll switch over to a 50% warm gray, which is slightly darker than the 20% warm gray. And again, we'll continue addressing the areas of darkest value. This includes the areas underneath the snout of the shark and the darkest areas in between each of the individual teeth. Now, of course, texture plays an important role in this drawing, and the texture of the skin of the shark is smooth in areas, but rather coarse in other areas. 
And as these early applications are made, we can see that there's a lot of brush strokes and marks that are visible. But as we begin to apply different drawing media over the top, we can start to build up this complexity and texture. So right now we're just focusing on shapes of value. We're not worrying about the texture at this point since we'll address it with charcoal applications. We'll continue with the 50% warm gray, filling in all of the medium to dark areas. Now we'll quickly get some hints of lighter value in place, and we'll start here with an application of white India ink. Now it's a little bit confusing when we're applying it to the surface because since the ink itself is wet, it's going to dampen the surface. But we also have these strong bits of white that are visible. Again, we'll see the brush strokes at this stage, but right now we're just getting an indication of the values in place. You can see around the mouth, I've mixed a bit of the darker India ink, the black India ink, with the white India ink to create some middle grays. At this point, we're focusing mainly on the lighter tones and values, and again, we're just roughing it in. So we're basically just getting bits of value in place. Again, these initial applications will serve as an underpainting. So we'll apply these applications using the white ink around the eye, underneath the mouth, and to portions of the teeth. Again, the brush strokes are very visible, but they'll serve as an underlayment for the development of the texture as the drawing progresses. Once our ink has dried completely, we can move on to our next drawing material and we'll start with some dark applications using a charcoal pencil. We'll start in the areas again of darkest value, in this case in the deepest recesses of the mouth. As we go, we can begin to define some of the individual teeth within the mouth. We'll also increase the contrast along the bottom portion of the mouth. And then to make the texture feel a little bit more believable and realistic, we'll go back with a blending stop and blend these applications into the tooth of the paper. We'll continue working on the bottom portion of the body of the shark, again in the area where the value or shadow is the darkest. We'll start right along the edge of the body and gradually pull out applications, working our way from the left side of the body of the shark to the right side of the body of the shark. Once we've got our initial charcoal applications in place, we can go back in again with the blending stop, smoothing these applications. Now I'm right-handed, so I'm working from the left side to the right side, but if you're left-handed, you might consider working from the right side of the shark to the left side so that you minimize any smearing or smudging that might occur by the palm of your hand. You can see here that we've now switched over to the white charcoal pencil, and for the majority of the remainder of the process, we're going to be going back and forth between the dark charcoal and the white charcoal, and again with the blending stop, smoothing transitions of tone and value. You can see we can put down the charcoal with a heavy application in the areas of darkest value, but we can also use a little bit of a lighter touch in areas where we have middle values. And then we can mute those values or make them a little bit lighter by using the blending stump to pull them around on the surface. Of course, our ink applications and the gray of the paper itself is going to work as an underlayment to help create a little bit more of a smoother transition between dark and light. So we can allow bits of the gray of the paper to show through and also some of our ink and marker applications to show through as well. Now in this particular case, our light source is originating from above and the left side. This means that most of our lighter values are going to exist on the left side of the shark and especially on the top portion of the shark. So we're going to see the strongest shadows on the underbelly, but we're also going to see the strongest highlights on the upper part of the body and we're also going to see a few of them on the extreme left portion of the body. The illusion of texture in a drawing is produced mainly by the relationships of values, meaning the dark and light tones in the drawing. And by positioning these dark and light tones, we create the impression of texture. Of course, directional stroking is also important as well. So as we begin to develop some of the texture on the body of the shark, we'll consider the relationships of the values. Now we'll darken up the value of the side fin on the left side of the drawing, again with an application of our charcoal pencil. And then we'll smooth this application again with the blending stop. Now there's a strong highlight that exists on the upper portion, so we'll address that with the white charcoal pencil. 
Now we'll continue working, developing the texture of the body of the shark, again with applications made with the black charcoal pencil and also the white charcoal pencil. Then again, we'll smooth these applications with the blending stump. As we pull the charcoal around on the surface using the blending stump, we'll consider the blending stump as a mark making tool. So we can pull some of the charcoal into areas where we haven't applied it with the pencil to create some transitions of tone and value. We'll also consider the directional strokes that are made with the blending stump as well. These strokes should not only mimic the strokes that we make with the charcoal pencils, but they should also flow around the form of the body of the shark. At this point, I see that the size of the eye needs to be enlarged a bit and made into more of an oval shape. So I'll use the charcoal pencil to address this. Then we'll add a few more highlights around the outside portion of the eye. You can see here that we have quite a bit of versatility with the applications made with the white charcoal pencil and the black charcoal pencil. We have quite a bit of control over the values that are produced as well as the resulting surface texture that's created when we go back over the top of these applications with the blending stump. But you'll also notice that this is a relatively slow process. It's important to take your time and not rush this process. Now, the darkness of the eye is not quite dark enough, so we'll go in with a technical drawing pen and apply some ink here. Then we'll continue on working our way down to the right side of the body of the shark, Work, working patiently again, making strokes that flow around the form of the body of the shark. For the upper portion of the body of the shark, most of these strokes are going to be horizontal in nature, but as you can see as we work down the side of the body, these strokes become more vertical. Now as we work our way to the bottom side or underneath the body of the shark, these strokes again become horizontal. Again, these are the strokes that will help create the illusion of form as well as texture while we develop the shadows and the different values in the drawing. Now you'll notice that as we're working our way down the right side of the body of the shark, we're working in small sections as we go. Now of course you can apply all of the dark charcoal and then go back and apply all the white charcoal if you prefer, but I've noticed that by working in small sections it allows me to evaluate each section as I go and evaluate the contrast between the different values as well as the texture. It also allows me to concentrate a little bit more fully on each section as I go. Here we'll continue working the underbody and on the underbody there's not a whole lot of difference in texture like we see on the front end of the shark where we're going to have a little bit more refinement. Uh, we're going to have more refinement in this area for a couple of reasons. One, this section of the shark sticks out and protrudes a little bit closer to the viewer. So we're going to see more detail here and by adding more detail we can further the illusion of the shark kind of disappearing back in space. In fact, we're not going to address many of the details on the tail at all. So you can see I'm going back into the mouth and I'm increasing the contrast with another application of the dark charcoal. We'll also see higher levels of contrast with objects that are closer to us. So we're going to make sure that we have higher contrast on the nose end of the shark. We can go back with a white charcoal pencil and refine some of the individual shapes of teeth as well. Then we'll return back to the midsection of the body and continue working our way towards the tail. As we go, we'll continue to increase the shadows and increase the contrast where necessary. The middle portion of the body gets a little bit darker and there's a higher level of contrast here even though it's further away from the viewer. Again, you can see that I'm pulling strokes with the blending stump to mimic the form of the shark. So again, these strokes will be horizontal on the top, vertical on the side, and then horizontal again on the underbelly. We'll use the white charcoal pencil and the black charcoal pencil to give a few subtle indications of the gills that exist in this location. Then there's a small section where we see some of the white from the underbelly towards the end of the tail. We'll add a slight indication of a highlight on the top side of the body and then we'll increase the darkness of the shadow on the underbelly.
Then again, it's back with the blending stop smoothing transitions of value and tone. We'll darken up the back side of the dorsal fin using the black charcoal pencil. And bring this application right up to the edge closer to the highlight on the left side of the dorsal fin. Again, we'll smooth transitions of value before going back with the white charcoal pencil to enhance the highlight on the left side of the dorsal fin, closest to the light source. Then we'll continue making applications with the black charcoal pencil close to the tail end of the body. We can strengthen the shadow underneath the side fin and then smooth transitions of value and tone using the blending stop. As I mentioned before, we're not going to add too many details to the tail of the fish. Instead, we want the shark to look like it's emerging from the depths. We'll strengthen the highlight on the back of the shark, and then we'll strengthen the highlight on the top of the side fin. We'll add a few small details to the side fin with the white charcoal pencil. Now we're ready to go back and really enhance some of the details. So we'll go back to the left side of the body of the shark using the white charcoal pencil and add a few textural marks. Some of these applications will be addressed with the blending stump while others will be allowed to remain on the surface without any blending at all. Because the marks are strong, it increases the contrast in this section, again making it look like it protrudes towards the viewer. As we add this additional layer of details, we can also address subtle changes of tone and value where needed. Since we've worked our way back to the left side of the shark, I've placed a paper towel underneath the palm of my hand to prevent any smearing of the details that we've already addressed. Now we'll pull out the HB Graphite pencil and we'll go back and refine some of the details. At this point, the HB Graphite pencil will read as a medium gray. This will allow us to add any of the imperfections in the skin of the shark using this gray material. We can also go back and add a few wrinkles around the mouth, a few indications of some prior altercations with other sharks as well. And we can also use this HB Graphite pencil to ease transitions of tone and value where needed. Because the Graphite pencil matches the gray of the pattern on the side of the shark, we can use it to refine the details, bringing down some of the marks into the white underbelly. And because the pencil can be sharpened to a fine tip, we can refine the details of the mouth, further defining each of the individual teeth. We'll increase the contrast even further with an application of the charcoal pencil, and then smooth the transition from dark to medium gray. We'll enhance the shadow on the right side of the mouth, and then it's back with the white charcoal pencil to further refine the details. We can add a few marks where the shark has come in contact with other sharks, and we can also enhance some of the indentations by adding a bit of highlight around them. We'll continue working our way down the body just as we did before, adding bits of lighter value in areas of darker value to add additional interest and depth in the application. We'll continue with the white charcoal pencil, easing transitions of tone and value and adding additional bits of detail. Now, the darkness of our mouth doesn't quite match the darkness of the eye, so we'll need to go back and increase the darkness within the mouth, increasing the contrast, and again making it look like it recedes further back. This, of course, will add to the menacing look of the shark. So we'll go in this area with a 2B graphite pencil, which is slightly darker than our HB pencil. 
we could achieve the darkest values in this location using a charcoal pencil, but we have a little bit more control using the 2B graphite. We can also further define each of the individual rows of teeth if we prefer, and further define the gums on the front side of the mouth. And now our mixed media drawing of a shark is complete. If you enjoyed this video, then I know that you'll enjoy being a member at thevirtualinstructor.com. Our comprehensive membership program includes video courses on drawing and painting, weekly live lessons, eBooks, lesson plans for teachers, weekly critiques, and much, much more. To learn more about our program, just visit thevirtualinstructor.com forward slash members or click on the card in the upper right hand corner. And if you want to check out three of our course modules for free, you can do so. Just click on the link on your screen now. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.